Oh man. Well, after getting my ass kicked by that Dodge Ram, here we have another interesting, potentially interesting case study. 2004 Toyota Highlander. Keys in my hand. Cooling fans running. Let's see here. That was blown away. That was still. See what happens when we uh, start it up. 120,000 miles. Turned off. Instantly turned back on. So key in the on position, it's off. As soon as you turn it to the accessory position or off. Wait a minute, it just quit. Interesting. It was definitely just on. So let's see. Let's turn the AC on. Alright, we got both fans on with the AC kicked on. That's cool. Off. Shut her down. There we go. It's on. Huh. Interesting problem. Key is off. Key's out. This guy's still running. There's this connector right here. So if you unplug it. Okay. So. I think uh, it's time for a wiring diagram here. You know, black and yellow and a uh, white and black. So let's see what feeds this fan here, the one with the issue. All right, here we are on BBB Industries, pulling up a wiring diagram for the cooling fans. Okay. So. Let's see here. First, let's locate our fan motors. So there's one. That's the condenser fan motor. That's for the AC. And you can see by the wiring colors, it's blue, red, blue, yellow. That's not our guy. Second motor is over here. We have black and yellow and white and black. Okay, that is the one we're, we're after. So let's see how this system works. It looks a little complicated, but so you have three relays. It looks like they're just solid state four pin relays. I mean, no logic or anything. I guess not solid state, mechanical. <clears throat> how about that? So, okay. We have to do load side and control side. And. The load side, okay, there's some uh, fat fuses there, and it feeds that one, that one, and this guy here, see, that's actually fed from, well, let's see, that's in series with this motor. I think Scanner Danner did a nice lecture on breaking all of this down. But in our case, we're after this radiator fan motor and let's see what can control that so you can be fed either by this relay here number one or relay number two in the 
So that's an interesting relay. It's a five pin actually. Right there. So two ways this can be fed. Now if it was through this relay it would be running at a slower speed and we would have the other motor on. So it's definitely being fed by uh, fan number one relay. Uh, so if you remember when we turned the AC on both fans kicked on but at a low speed so the current was flowing through this fan through this open relay and through our radiator fan and that that worked fine. When we shut the key off this fan kicks on high speed okay so the current must be traveling through this leg through this fan number one relay and uh, that's where I think we should start our search. Alright, under the hood, got my scope on a rope ready. Here's our relay box. Let's pop that open, see what we find in here. There we go. Thank you, Toyota, for labeling your stuff. Okay, let's see here. Fan number one. Then there's fan number three and fan number two. Okay, so uh, look here. These look, well, I don't know, original or not, but this one's definitely different. So someone's been here already. Um, let's see, let's plug it in. It's running. Pull this guy out. That's definitely our guy. That's the right relay. Number one relay. Okay, so let's do some checks on this relay with the test light. Alright, test light time. Connected to battery negative. Light works. Now, with a four pin relay, it's pretty straightforward. One thing we can check right away is that pin that's facing perpendicular to the other ones. That should be our main feed for the load side and that is good and now obviously we know that our you know load side going to the fan that should be good but just in case you want to check test light the battery positive we can disconnect the connector here our test light goes out okay boom so that just verifies wiring integrity, but we know the fan works, so no reason to chase that. Now let's focus on the control side. Now, looking back at our diagram, what do we have on the control side? Number one relay. Let's see here, it's fed through this 10 amp heater fuse, okay, and so are the other relays. See there, there, so they're all on the same fuse here, the control side, keep in mind, and that it should be on when the ignition switch is turned to the on position, okay? And so that, you know, that would be a constant power and it's ground side switched. And then we come to this junction here and let's see what can turn this on. There's a engine control there, water temp switch, that can turn the fan on. AC pressure switch that can turn the fan on. It's thing that yeah, that's about it. So these three things, but um, so what do we expect? With the key on, one of those pins should be hot, and the other one. Well, we don't know if the engine's commanding it on. We should expect the ground there, but if nothing, you know, if this fan is not being commanded on. Uh, we should see an open circuit there. So let's check that. Alright, we're back at battery negative. Test light works. So now on the control side with the key off, I expect nothing. I mean, it shouldn't light up. Why is that lit? Okay, this guy, uh, ever so dim. There's probably some back feeding through here. So that's with the key off. So left pin is hot with the key off. Keep that in mind. Okay. Now I'm going to turn the key on and we'll do that measurement again. 
So, okay, key on. Checking both pins again. So that one is still bright. Now the other side is bright. That's interesting. So the difference between key off and key on was this right pin on the control side. And the left one did not change, but why is it lit up? That's what I'm not sure about. So, uh, just to verify this, let's take that 10 amp fuse out and see if our light goes out, just to be 100% that that is our feed to the control side. So let's uh, find where this fuse lives. Now, Japanese cars, usually the fuse box is somewhere over here. Uh, 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 uh. Sometimes it's behind some cover. Ooh, look. Someone leave me a tip. Now uh, we'll be honest, we'll be honest, we won't take any, anything that's not ours. And I think I see fuses behind that little cover. Alright, here we go. And, cool, we got a little chart. Heater, 10 amp. Okay, so it's the third fuse. So I'm going to pop it out. I'm going to watch the test light. See that? I am taking it out now. Okay, perfect. So what we just learned is the right pin here is definitely our feed to the control side of the relay. Okay, now let's see what's going on with with this guy here. Why is that? Why is that lit up? That pin right now, it's, uh, you know, it's high. It's, I don't know if it's 12 volts, but there's voltage on that pin. And that's a ground side switched design. So, hmm. How can we explain this? So this does not change key on or key off, right? Now, when we turn the key off, this side, Like, why would that relay turn on when the key is turned off? That's why I want to know. So let's put our test light to battery positive now. Okay. So the key off. Let's see here. So key's on. This is our feed. So obviously test like the battery positive, we won't see a light. But I'm wondering, is that pin grounded or is there a way to ground when we uh, turn the key off? So take, you know, turn the key off, keep looking at the light. It's very dim. <clears throat> so that's dim. Let's see this side. This side is still positive, it's still hot. I just switched my test light to negative. So this pin is hot all the time, and this one's only hot when it's supposed to be. I think that explains our, our issue, okay? So when the key's off, we don't have any power coming into the control side, but we have, for some reason, the other side of that control is hot and it's not supposed to be that is our issue so now we want to see why this pin is hot that is what's kicking our fan on so again we want to see why the control side pin number two here why this is hot it's a ground side switch relay there this is never supposed to be hot you know there's like a feed here <clears throat> so it must be coming from that wire and we can check fan relay number two possibly this is also hot right here okay now 
So let's, let's just double check that. Make sure everything here is hot when it's not supposed to be. And uh, fan relay number two, I just popped it out, is right here. So their test light, again, checking both sides, test lights at, you know, battery ground. That one also lights, just like relay number one. So I think we're on the right track. This relay, when you plug it in, your keys off, it clicks. So, that's, that's kind of bizarre. Just to double check the feed to the control side. Yep, that's good. So again, same, you know, same issue, but it's all tied together. So we have just confirmed that we're also high on this fan number two relay on the ground side control pin. <clears throat> so something in here is causing this circuit to go high. What can it be? Uh, let's see, these switches here, AC single pressure switch, water temp switch, they all pull this circuit to ground. There's no way, I mean, I can't say there is no way, but if there's a broken wire here, this isn't going to be high, and these can't really send a high signal, meaning positive voltage. Third pin goes to our engine control module. So red, yellow wire, connector, blue and white. Um, so, in this case, I guess we just have to start unplugging things. So let's unplug this connector right here, cut out this leg of the circuit and see if we lose voltage on these pins. Now to find this connector, EB2, we do have to go to all data, to our connector locations, and it looks like it should be right near the fuse box. Okay? So keep in mind, we, our wiring colors are red, yellow, and blue and white. So there are two connectors right here, right near the fuse box. And I see, let's see, there's a blue, is that blue and white? I'm not looking, it's like looking a little crusty here, I'll tell you the truth. Let me uh, separate these out, see if I can find the right colors. So, I found the right wiring color, and I just want to get this on camera. So we're on that pin, okay, on the one that's high, when it's not supposed to be. Now I'm going to unplug that connector, and if that leg of the circuit is pulling uh, that pin high, our Tesla should go out when I disconnect this. So I'm fiddling with the connector here, and what the heck. Isn't that nuts? I'm not even doing anything, so I think we're definitely on the right track here. Definitely. Let me unplug that, see what happens. Okay, I got that connector disconnected right here. There's the blue and white wire going to the PCM. And on this side, if you can see, there's a red, zoom in here, red with a yellow. That's the one we're looking at, that bottom, bottom wire there. And our test light, surprisingly, is still lit. Now that, I would say, is really good news because now we have isolated, you know, we got the PCM out of the picture. So the computer, is not the issue here. Whew. <clears throat> so, our problem is from here to there. So again, looking at the, that wiring diagram, let's see what we just discovered here. We disconnected the PCM right here. So that's out of the picture. And somehow still, this pin is high. Now the only things left connected are this water temp switch, AC single pressure switch and then even our relay number two that's out of the picture so some, somewhere there's a short to power in this little tree here so that should not be that hard to find but then again um, well I guess we, you know we have to get to the bottom of this so let's see if we can find that short to power and just as a confirmation 
on that pin, we take our test light and see if the power is actually coming, you know, from the fuse box area instead of the PCM. So if we can uh, rotate this thing a little bit here. So that corner pin should light our test light, right? So yeah, right there. That's not supposed to happen. That's a problem. So that's what we're chasing. Now I found sometimes the most efficient way to locate these shorts to power or ground is connect your test light. So obviously it's showing right now we have a problem and when that problem disappears, the light should go out. And then you just tap on, you know, the connectors, the wires. I mean, we're, we're really close. That makes me feel good that, you know, something is changing just by me fiddling with these wires, okay? You know, touch the harness. Pulling on the wires and going into the box. I mean, can I do something to make that light go out? So I'm going to fiddle around with this and hopefully we can get to the bottom of this pretty quick. Alright guys, it's getting a little late, getting dark. Still fiddling with this connector, it's unplugged. I unwrapped the wires even. And you know, you're fiddling with it and the test light kind of flickers and stuff. So we're really close. But I want to kind of speed up the process here. I want to see where this bad whatever short is. Is it coming from the connector? I mean, it's unplugged. But let's stop guessing here. Turn on our amp clamp. Re-zero it, okay, our test light is drawing 0 0.16, 0 0.15, it's about 100, 150 to 200 milliamps, okay that's cool. Now let's see if we can find that current on this yellow wire, I don't know how it could be coming from the connector but you know let's, let's just get our jaws around that red and whatever yellow wire 0.25 so within the margin of error that wire right now is carrying current and you see I let it go the test light flickered we're back to zero I'm not kidding you guys that, that wire is carrying current no joke let's see And this thing is kind of a little finicky. We re zero it. Get it on our wire. I don't know if I can trust this now. <laughs> Let's check here again. 0.15, okay. There, it's showing 0.2. Go this way. Point two, right there. That wire is carrying current right now. So that short has to be coming from inside the connector. That is crazy. I mean, it doesn't look too bad, right? It's all sealed, and this side looks okay. I think we might need to take that pin out and. Uh, Take a look inside. I mean, that wire right now is carrying current. I, I can't believe it myself. It's not connected to anything. Apparently, it is. Right there, 0.2 amps. My test light, 0.2 amps. We can even uh, leave it on here. Okay, proof of concept here. 0.2 amps. I'm going to take my test light off. Bam, zero. Test light on. 0.2. The wire is carrying current, no question about it. Bad connector. Let's uh let's tear this thing apart. So just to make sure, if the current's going that way from the connector and the connector is unplugged, the current has to be coming into the connector and one of these other wires. And you have to take my word for it, you know, I checked the pins, but you can see on our ammeter, 
the neighboring wire, this white with a blue trace, that guy is carrying our 0.2 amps into the connector. Isn't that nuts? The current is coming in this one and going out on that one. So two neighboring pins apparently are shorted inside this connector. That is wild. And I don't even know how to get that plastic out of there to get the pins out, clean this thing up. But, you know, so at this point, diagnosis is complete. Uh, I don't know if I'll get to this right now, but in any case, thanks a lot for watching, guys. I really appreciate it. That was another uh, bizarre one, I guess. I mean, geez, like, you don't even see the green crusties on this thing. How is it shorted inside? Probably from some battery juice. Weird. In any case, even Toyotas can break down. Well, if the video ends here, catch you later. So I got this plastic piece out, quick and dirty, with a pick. I can see our pins in there. So the ones we're worried about are on the edge. I'm pulling on this pin. I can actually hear the arcing inside the connector and our test lights flickering. I mean, that's, that's freaking wild. There's nothing obvious here. It's just... Let's see if you can hear it. Well, let me try to get the pin out see what's going on here. Well, you know what? Quickest repair here. Snip this wire off. Just bypass the damn thing. There's no need to waste time fiddle with this connector. Uh, it's going to work perfectly fine. That pin will just, uh, you know, take it out. Um, yeah, I don't want to waste any more time on this. We'll just bypass the one wire. We'll be good to go. Alright, guys. Final shot of the repair. Two wires. Resoldered, shrink wrapped, taped up, beautiful. Those are going to stay here. Everything else is back in this factory location. Let's do a fast check that that pin is not high anymore. Perfect. That is awesome. Let's pop these relays back in. That did not click, which is beautiful. Let's pop this aftermarket piece of crap in here. Awesome. One, two, freaking barbecue, man. Uh, let's plug this fan back in. So now everything uh, should work. I guess we could test the cooling fan and we know it works, the control side. You know, when the PCM commands it on, it'll turn on when it needs to. Alright guys, thanks a lot for watching. Have a great night.